my name is Roy Simpson, and I am a professor of mathematics at Sumner's River College in Sacramento, California. This is yet another proof in my series, Proofs in Differential Calculus. This proof, we are going to concentrate actually not on this entire theorem, but only the most important part of this theorem, which is the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of the absolute value of x is equal to 1 over x. So this will take care of both proofs, actually. Um, the first, first one, which is derivative with respect to x of the natural log of x is equal to 1 over x, and then the absolute value case. So I find that that is actually a much more uh, entertaining proof anyway. And uh, you will have a couple prerequisite pieces of knowledge here. You need to know what implicit differentiation is. You need to know how to uh, implicitly derive things. Also, you'll have to be very familiar with properties of logarithms. Uh, specifically, uh, we're going to be using, um, I think we're going to be using e to the natural log of x is equal to x. We're going to be using that property uh, a little bit here. So let's go ahead and start into the proof. And what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and write proof here. And we're going to start with the left-hand side. So um, the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of the absolute value of x. Well, in this case, um, we don't know what this derivative is, so we're going to first let y equal the natural log of the absolute value of x. Of course, a couple things uh, happen here, uh, specifically uh, by the definition of absolute value, which I suppose would be another prerequisite item. You should know that the absolute value of an item is, is actually defined as a piecewise defined function. It's either that item, if that item is greater than zero, otherwise it's the opposite of that item, if that item is less than zero. Obviously one of these can contain equality to zero, that doesn't really matter. So we're going to split this into two cases. So first case, case, um, and we'll say uh, that x is greater than zero. So if that's the case, then y is actually equal to the natural log of, if x is greater than zero, then the absolute value of x just turns into x itself. And that implies, what I'm going to do is raise both sides base e. So I'm going to say that implies that e to the y is equal to e to the natural log of x. And then I know that from that property e to the natural log of x is equal to x. I know I can rewrite this as e to the y is equal to x. I will now take the derivative implicitly with respect to x of both sides. I think it is more important for me right now to actually say d dx of e to the y is, should equal d dx of x itself. Because I want to show you that I'm taking the derivative with respect to x. So let's see, the derivative with respect to x of e to the function is e to the function. But we have to hop inside the exponent there and take the derivative of whatever that function is. So dy dx. The right-hand side, derivative with respect to x of x, is just 1. Now I'm going to go ahead and solve for dy dx here. So this implies that dy over dx, dy dx, is equal to 1 over e to the y power. And I happen to know from a previous comment here that e to the y power is just x. I'll highlight the whole thing just so we can see it. So that totally means that I can replace the e to the y with just a little old x. And notice that we have taken the derivative of uh, E, well, we've taken the derivative of y with respect to x and got that it was 1 over x. And y was originally the natural log of the absolute value of x. Well, specifically in this case, it's the natural log of x. We still haven't taken care of what happens if x is negative, so let's go ahead and do that. Case uh, x being negative. So this is the one where people think it falls apart, but it actually doesn't. If x is negative, then instead of y equaling the natural log of x, it'll be the natural log of the opposite of x, right, from this definition right up here of the absolute value. And I'll do the same trick. So this implies that e to the y is equal to e to the natural log of negative x, 
which implies that e to the y is equal to negative x itself. And now I'll go ahead and take the derivative again implicitly. So the derivative, and I'll show that step here, right? Derivative with respect to x of e to the y should equal uh, the derivative with respect to x of negative x. And of course, implicit differentiation gives us the following. This is going to be e to the y times uh, dy dx equals and derivative with respect to x of negative x is a negative 1. Divide both sides by e to the y and you will get that the derivative again with respect to x of y is going to be a negative 1 this time over e to the y and people often think well now see they're two totally different derivatives however in this case when x is less than 0 the derivative sorry e to the y is equal to negative x. So I'll go ahead and substitute that in. So this is equal to negative 1 over negative x or in other words again 1 over x. So it actually did not matter if x was positive or if x was negative. The derivative of y with respect to x still came out to be 1 over x in either case. So that implies or that tells us that the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of the absolute value of x, doesn't matter what, if x is positive or negative, will always be 1 over x. Notice I didn't care about when x is 0 because you can't take the natural log of 0, it's undefined. Okay, that is the proof, QED. Let's write that in.